So now that you have a basic idea of what the program is trying to accomplish here, we're going to go ahead and take a look at how we can apply Java's functional programming features to start and join threads in our program. And this will also give us a chance to talk a bit about threads, which are useful to be aware of. This particular example is going to focus primarily on its functional programming features, its FP features, but of course, there's also object-oriented stuff here going on as well, but we won't be focusing on it as much. So if you go to the thread join test updated folder in my GitHub repository, you can find thread join test.java, and we're going to look at the run hook method. And what this method's going to do is it's going to start a group of threads that will search for phrases in parallel. So for each thread, it's going to be uh, associated with a work of Shakespeare. So there'll be one thread to process Hamlet, one thread to process Macbeth. And when I say process, I mean search for phrases in the text corresponding to that work. King Lear, Julius Caesar, Twelfth Night, As You Like It. The list goes on and on, of course. What is a Java thread? A Java thread is a unit of computation that runs in the context of something called a process. And I'll explain what these things mean in more detail in a second. You can learn more about threads if you take a look at the link at the bottom of this slide. So basically what we're gonna do here is in the run method, we're going to make a call to a factory method. Remember a factory method is, is a gang of four pattern that makes some object. In this case, we're going to make a list of worker threads. So make worker threads is a factory method that's gonna make a list of worker threads and it's going to take a method reference, so now we're into Java 8 stuff now, Java modern Java stuff, it's gonna take a method reference to a method called process input, which is actually gonna do the searching for the phrases in a given string, and it's gonna pass that in as a method reference. So you can see that process input is a method which takes a string and does not return a value, and we're gonna go ahead and associate that method reference with a thread, and I'll show you how we do that in a second. The make worker threads factory method takes one parameter, which is a functional interface, which is the function functional interface, which in this case is going to take a string, which is going to be the, the input to search, and it returns nothing. It returns void. And of course, that matches the signature for process input. So you can see process input takes a string, doesn't return anything, and that's the that's the parameter type, the function descriptor for the function functional interface. So here's the make worker threads method. You can see that it's what's going to create a list of threads that will then be used later to do the computations. And here's what it does. It goes ahead and it internally makes a list of threads using new array list. And this is, this is the part where we're still kind of stuck in old school object oriented Java because we really haven't quite got to the point where we're using the cool Java stream stuff in earnest yet. And then for each of the elements in the input, so remember the input list would be all the works of Shakespeare. We're going to say for each input, for each work of Shakespeare in that list, go ahead and create a new thread. And you can see this is using the Lambda expression syntax, we say new thread. And what the thread's gonna do is when the thread starts to run, it will call the apply method on the task that was passed in for this particular input string. So what we're doing here is we're creating these new threads, each of which will run the task, which will be searching for the works of the phrases in Shakespeare for a given work of Shakespeare. And that's the input string. And then we're adding that new thread into the worker threads variable, which is a list of threads. And then when we're all done, we return the list of worker threads. Now, again, this is, this is kind of a, a hybrid model where we're using object-oriented programming features like lists and array lists and loops and so on in conjunction with functional programming features like tasks. So, this is better than doing things in a purely object-oriented way, and we'll, we'll see why later, but it's not as good as we can do with more advanced features in Java. So we're, we're building one step at a time to get to the, the nirvana of uh, parallel functional programming. When we start a worker thread, what that does under the hood is it 
creates a new runtime call stack to perform the operations, perform the methods that are defined in that thread, starting with the process input method that we passed in as a method reference when we made ourselves the list of worker threads. So basically a thread is a unit of computation. It contains some, some state that's specific to the thread, things like the call stack. Each thread has its own call stack. Each thread has its own registers, like its instruction pointer and its stack pointer. Each thread has its own thread-specific storage. There's certain resources that are unique to a thread. And then threads also share other things within the context of a process. In the context of Java and um, various operating systems like Linux and Windows, a process is a unit of resource allocation and protection. And within a process, we can have multiple threads running and those can get mapped to underlying cores to run in parallel. The diagram here shows you a process, which is that gray round angle with a bunch of threads, in this case, four of them running inside. And of course, what's gonna happen here is we're gonna go ahead and tell every one of the worker threads to start. And so we're gonna say worker threads dot for each, which says it's a, a method which you should be familiar with now for assignment 1B. It goes ahead and says, start running this thread and that will then start the thread running and it'll start by running the process input method. And that in turn will go and search for phrases in the work of Shakespeare. So this particular implementation uses what we call as a thread per work parallelism model or a thread per input element worker model. And this particular approach um, has some pros, has some cons, but notice how we've hard coded our solution to use that approach. Once everything's been kicked off, the thread that start, started all the processing in motion, you know, set the wheels in motion, as we like to say, then does something called a barrier synchronization step where it's going to wait for all the threads that it spawned to finish running. And it does that by using a for each method and a Lambda expression. And this Lambda expression is a simple form of so-called barrier synchronization. So the thread that's the main thread that the one that spawned all the other threads now waits for all those threads to finish. And when a thread finishes, thread.join will return and then you know that that thread is done. So this is not the most efficient way or the best way to do it, it's just a way that does it using the features of Java we've introduced so far. No other Java synchronizers are used in this example other than the barrier synchronizer, which isn't really a synchronizer, it's, it's a feature built into threads that's used for barrier synchronization. And this allows us to use our embarrassingly parallel model to run everything at the same time without having to worry about coordinating or dealing with data dependencies between the different threads because they're all doing their own independent processing on each work of Shakespeare without any concern for anybody else and what they're doing. So that's the end of the overview of what this program does. What we will do next is evaluate whether it does it good or bad and what else could be done to make it better.